this month's theme is the present of presence. Say that five times fast. The presence of, it's cute to say it, but really we mean the gift of the now. That's the less tongue twisty way to say it. And so we're going to just do a quick little exercise. This is a eyes open. I mean, you can do whatever you want. First, we just take a breath. And we notice thoughts. Just notice, breathe, breathe thoughts. And then we notice, maybe even curious, what do we smell? What do we hear? Like, I hear my fountain crinkling and I hear the little sound of my computer. I hear, sometimes I hear the chair in the office above me. What do I hear? What other, what do I see? What do I notice? Do I see things or is it just, it's always the same thing so I don't notice? What do I feel? How does my chair feel underneath me? How, or how do my feet feel in my socks or my shoes if we have socks and shoes on? Hmm. And we can just take a moment to allow all those things that we've noticed to tether us into the now. We're not thinking about how our socks or shoes felt yesterday or how they'll feel tomorrow. We're just thinking and feeling them now. And then we allow any commentary about what we're noticing to just kind of pass. And we come back to the noticing of the present. And then we breathe. So that's just one little exercise that we can do if we notice either our mind racing or maybe we're getting really caught up in things to just stop and notice. Notice the color of the flower. Really notice the variegation in the grass. Notice how your foot feels in your sock. So I want to read a little quote from you to quote to you from Myrtle Fillmore, co-founder of Unity. Yesterday was Myrtle Fillmore's birthday, by the way. This is the very first paragraphs from the very first chapter of her book, How to Let God Help You. If you have a copy of this, it might look different. It has lots of different covers. <laughs> um, and she writes, and this is, not, she didn't write this book as a book. This is a collection of her letters. So you imagine that she wrote this to someone. I just want to come in and have a visit with you. Let us forget all that has passed, pressed itself into upon us to make us sometimes feel that God the good is not all in all. Here in the silence, we shall know the presence of God and see clearly just how we are to go about living the life that God is giving us so we may bring forth the order, beauty, and freedom that God has planned and that are now awaiting our understanding use. But let us not go too far into the metaphysics of this wonderful thing. Instead, we are here together just to rest quietly and happily in reality. As we do this, a real transformation will be worked in us and for us. We shall reap the good fruits of our study, affirmation, and meditation. Hmm. I just feel like a warm hug after reading that. And I find that it's easy to distract ourselves from what's happening in us by 
all the stuff that's happening around us. I once know, knew someone who actually had a little note taped on their steering wheel in their car to um, remind them to not turn on the radio and stay present. I don't know if this is a commentary on their driving or whether it was a spiritual practice, but it was <laughs> something I remember. And Myrtle Fillmore reminds us just to not make it so complicated. I imagine her saying, come on in and let's sit together for a spell. And then after that space, or maybe before, depending on the situation, we follow through on things that we may need to do or learn. Always grounded by the practice of presence. First, come inside, sit a while, rest, notice. And then if we need to find something out, if we need to learn something, we need to do something, then we'll do that. Another quote from Myrtle. Keep your soul open to the shining light of truth but denial of past or future claims upon you, for you live in the now. Affirm the now as your only active entity. So shall truth descend in full power upon you, not divided by past memories or future desires, but bursting with present fulfillment. No mortal lie can creep into the glory of the ever present now. No cloud of doubt can hover over such present certainty. Keep your soul open to the shining light of truth by denial of past or future claims upon you. There's something really exciting about that to me. Denial of past or future claims. So what does that mean? Of course, in this context, denial is meant in a releasing slash forgiving slash healing way, a way of letting go. It is not to make believe like, oh, that didn't happen. No, we're letting go of the past's hold on us. We're letting go of the hurts or limitations that we may have brought along with us for the ride. And we also are releasing worry or concern for the future in a way that it takes our attention away from the present. That doesn't mean that we don't use wisdom and discernment and our other spiritual attributes in our actions. If we only lived in the now and we didn't use our wisdom, we would say, oh, well, there's a slick spot in the driveway but I'm not standing on it right now, so it doesn't matter. Now that is not what we're talking. Wisdom tells us to do something about the slick spot, whatever might be the most wise action. Let's definitely pay attention to it if we're walking around it, right? We don't say, eh, not my problem right now, so it doesn't matter. Similarly, wisdom and experience help us shape. Um, we know, for instance, that having a certain amount of food and other supplies on hand is wise, whether uh, you live in earthquake zones or tornado zones or hurricane zones, or whether there might be a pandemic, whatever's going on, it's good to have some supplies on hand. We know that that's wisdom, but we don't make that the thing that we're always thinking about because then the future is holding on to us when we're not present in the now. So I think that the best way to be in the now is to just take care of the things like continue to notice and clean up whatever hurts or patterns or resentments from the past. And also just to take care of the things that we might worry about for the future that we can do something about. Like I can't predict an earthquake. 
but I can have a radio and food on hand. And now there's not really anything else I can do about it. So I'm just not gonna bother, not gonna worry about it. Gonna be in the now. Hmm. So let's put our energy in the now. Put our energy in the wisdom and faith. So we practice presence in the silence. Like Myrtle said, come, and come on up here on the porch and let's sit a while. Like the exercise we did at the beginning where we just notice all of those things. We notice the thoughts in our head. And one of the big presents of presents is what we can give each other. I imagine that not only if you had a good sit with Myrtle Fillmore, that if you were sharing a concern, she wasn't thinking about her shopping list <laughs> or trying to get you to hurry up or think about what to say next. She would just be present with you because she would know that whatever was hers to say would come to her when it was time to say it because she practiced the presence. And she probably had days off just like the rest of us. We all have off days. And so let's not get ourselves caught up in the past instead of the present by the things way we screwed up in the past, okay? Let's just not, just let it go. It happened. If we need to clean up or make amends, let's do that. But then let's learn from it and move on. Learn from it, forgive, make amends if necessary, move on, live in the now, live in the present. So even though we know that we've had moments we've been not so skillful, we can always enter into our relationships with others or interactions with each other with the intention of presence. This is where I believe our own practice is key. Because if we practice, even sometimes, just being present with what thoughts are in our head and just noticing it simply without judgment, without commentary, then we are able to extend that same grace to whoever's in front of us. If someone shows up in front of us and you can tell they're upset, it's probably not helpful to say, you shouldn't be upset, get over it. It's probably more helpful to say, you look upset. I'm sorry that this happened. How can I support you? Those would be, of course, things that you would say as the conversation was happening. And just listen for what, instead of, I mean, you may be having your own feelings and reactions and whatever in your head and in your heart, and that's okay. But to be really present with people, you just need to put a lid on that and be present. And we breathe into that. And it is an amazing gift when we can give that presence to someone because they feel the lightness when they have the power to say, okay, what is mine to do about this? And now that I've sat with it. That's one of the ways we help bring peace about on our world too, because we're not contributing to the drama. Yes, presence is a antidote to drama. Finally, I'd like to note, because we know giving that uh, present of presence to someone is a wonderful gift. That not all of us have the same social or cultural societal norms about what that looks like. For some of us, eye contact is the, pro is the cultural norm. For other people, it's not. For some people, the comfort might happen sitting side by side. It's too much to look straight on at someone. 
However, we can give presence to someone in a way that they are able to be present. And of course, we also have different ways that we process information. We have different ways that our brains work. What's important is that we come in and allow our inner narrative to settle and allow them to rise up. And that's something we practice by our own practice. So let us give ourselves and our community the gift, the gift of living in the now, the gift of our presence, the gift of being able to immerse ourselves in this moment because we've let go, at least for the moment, of all the worries and judgments of the past and all of the concern about the what ifs of the future. We just sort those out using our wisdom and we are able to be here in the now. We come sit a while. And I just love that image and maybe you do too, maybe you don't, I don't, just sit a while. Let us just sit a while together. So this month, maybe forever, but this month as we practice the presence of presence, the present of presence, <laughs> let us take a few moments or more and notice not only in our meditation, you know, we sit in meditation and we kind of think we tune everything out, but what if we notice mindfully the flowers and the color of the flowers? What if we noticed mindfully the waving of the grass and the wind? What if we noticed in this moment, whatever it is that's happening in our environment, the sounds, the smells, the sensations of our socks? If we practice that practice, we can walk more mindfully on the earth. 